In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Arms Warrior in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, the talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course the macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Kata using our brand new SkillCapped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at SkillCapped.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from Rank 1 players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered and while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with SkillCat, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off at the character select screen where it is time to choose your race. Now, as with most classes, human is going to be the best option if you're playing Alliance. The double damage trinket is honestly just too good to pass up. Now, this is because of Will to Survive, which allows you to break out of any crowd control on a two minute cooldown. And as a result, you can equip two damage trinkets instead of just one. The Heart of Rage is an amazing trinket as it allows us to reach our expertise cap pretty dang easily. Now, for Horde, you really only have one option to choose from, and that best option is going to be Orc. The stun reduction provided by Orc is very powerful and can easily be the difference between winning and losing a game. Blood Fury is also a pretty nice bonus as this effectively just kind of serves as a mini trinket. Now, while Horde is a solid option, most warriors are gonna find themselves on the Alliance playing human as this helps to optimize our gearing strategy. Talents work slightly different in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you're going to need to know. There's only one build that you're going to be playing, but there's going to be some minor adjustments that you can make to it. Cataclysm includes a new talent for warriors called Throwdown. This allows us to stun a target for 5 seconds on a 45 second cooldown, and this is honestly extremely powerful. Throwdown also has an animation that must occur before it can be trinketed. This lasts about 1.5 to 2 seconds, which means that the target can't really instantly trinket it. We also have Gag Order, which turns our heroic throw and pummel into a 3 second blanket silence. This is amazing into casters and can easily land kills into healers. In the protection tree, you have some flexibility with toughness. This provides some additional armor, but you can drop it for blood and thunder. This makes it that when you use Thunderclap, your Ren spreads to nearby targets, and this isn't recommended when playing with a class that has breakable CC, such as a Hunter. You also have the option of dropping Sweeping Strikes, which is our Cleave talent, for another point in Sudden Death, which is a free Execute proc. Now, this isn't usually recommended, but it can be a good option when playing 2v2, where targets are likely not going to be stacked as often. Along with talents, the glyph system has changed a little bit in Cataclysm as well. Now you're going to have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. Your glyphs are pretty set in stone and it's the same for all builds, but there is one small adjustment you can make in the major glyphs, which we're going to cover later. Glyph of Mortal Strike increases the damage of our primary damaging ability. Glyph of Overpower functions the same as Glyph of Mortal Strike, providing a straightforward damage increase. Glyph of Bladestorm reduces the cooldown of one of our biggest burst abilities. Your builds will have the same three major glyphs, Colossus Smash, Shield Wall, and Sweeping Strikes. Glyph of Colossus Smash makes it so that when you use this ability, it's going to automatically apply Sunder Armor. Glyph of Shield Wall increases the damage reduction provided by this ability, but also increases the cooldown. And finally, we have Glyph of Sweeping Strikes. This removes the Rage cost so that we can use it on demand. Now, as an alternative, you can drop Glyph of Sweeping Strikes for one of the two Charge Glyphs. Glyph of Long Charge increases the range, and Glyph of Rapid Charge reduces the cooldown. Either option can be a solid pick, and it just depends on your preference. Finally, our Minor Glyphs are really not all that important, but they can have a slight impact on the game. Glyph of Battle increases the duration of your Battle Shout, so you have to refresh this less often. 
Glyph of Berserker Rage causes this ability to generate 5 Rage. Glyph of Command is the same as Glyph of Battle, but applies to Commanding Shout. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new Classic course. There is one cooldown we haven't touched on yet, and learning how to use it properly is crucial. Disarm. Now, most people would simply look at this ability and be like, okay, yeah, great, I can peel melee DPS, um, <laughs> so what? But actually, there's a few hidden uses for Disarm that we need to talk about. And in this video, we're going to go over them. To start, though, we obviously have the standard uses, which are peeling melee DPS, where Disarm is best used for disarming opponents' key offensives. And those abilities are kind of like Shadow Dance from Rogues, Bladestorm from fellow warriors, Avenging Wrath from Rets or really anytime your team or yourself are in danger. But then we've got the more advanced uses. Here you can actually start to look to use Disarm in more of an offensive manner. Against Hunters, disarming them will prevent the usage of Scattershock, which can be great for denying peels on yourself, but more importantly, for preventing crowd control onto your healer in dire situations, especially if you're then using Gag Order to prevent the Freezing Trap. Where it really shines, though, is against two classes in specific, Fellow Warriors and Death Knights. As when disarmed, Death Knights are unable to use Death Strike, which is one of their main ways to survive when focused. Again, if you combine this fact alongside Gag Order from Pummel, your chances of killing Death Knights absolutely skyrocket. Then, as for Warriors, disarming them is even more effective, as you're going to completely remove their ability to use Shield Wall. Hopefully, nobody ends up doing this to you, so next time you're facing one of these two specs and you get them low, consider using Disarm offensively. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over Stat Priority. You'll want as much strength as possible, and you're going to naturally acquire this through your gear. After that, your highest priority is hitting the 5% hit cap. This ensures that your abilities don't miss, and nothing is more frustrating than when you're about to win the game and then your killing blow just completely misses the target. You'll then need 20 Expertise rating. This is extremely important as Warrior because if your Mortal Strike is parried or dodged, it doesn't apply the Mortal Wounds effect. Then you want at least 3,000 Resilience. This is going to help ensure you can survive enemy kill attempts. After that, you'll want Critical Strike, and there's no specific breakpoint you're looking for here, but rather, you want to stack this as high as possible. Mastery isn't really a bad stat to have, as it allows you to proc an additional hit and can do quite a bit of damage Finally, your lowest priority is haste. But before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre-biz gear using the link in the description below. Now let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. In Season 9, many of your best in slot pieces will come from PvP, but there will be two items that you're going to want to acquire from PvE. Your main pieces will be the Vicious Gladiator's Battle Gear set which includes the Vicious Gladiator's Plate Helm, Shoulders, Chest Piece, Gauntlets, and Leg Guards. We're running 5 set just due to the set's stats being optimized for our breakpoints. For your off pieces, you'll want Vicious Gladiator's Cloak of Alacrity, your bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Arm Plates of Alacrity, Vicious Gladiator's Girdle of Cruelty in the Waste Slot, and finally, to round out our off pieces, you have Vicious Gladiator's War Boots of Cruelty in the Boot Slot. For your weapons, you're going to want to be using Reclaimed Ashkandi, Great Sword of the Brotherhood on the Alliance side, and Shalak Doom, the Axe of Unmaking on the Horde side. These items are similar in that they both have crit, but Ashkandi has hit and Shalak Doom has expertise. This means you're going to need to adjust your reforges to meet the stat breakpoints. The ranged slot will be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's War Edge. For your jewelry, you're going to want to pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Choker of Proficiency. For your rings, you're going to want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Signet of Accuracy and Cruelty. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity on the Horde. If you're on Alliance, you're going to replace this with Heart of Rage. Without Heart of Rage, you're going to have an Expertise Deficit, even with Shalok Doom, so keep this in mind when reforging. 
You'll then want to use the Vicious Gladiator's Badge of Victory for both Horde and Alliance. As mentioned, when it comes to reforging, your goal is to stick to your stats. You're going to end up reforging any extra hit and any haste to crit. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Strength, comes from PvP, so it's going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Strength for your shoulders, and this too comes from PvP. Then head to the Auction House, where you'll pick up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience does help to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra damage from Peerless Stats is going to be beneficial. You'll then grab Major Strength for your Bracers, Mighty Strength for your Gloves, Earth and Vitality for your Boots. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak is going to be enchanted with Sword Guard. If you choose another profession, then you're going to want to grab Greater Critical Strike. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with Dragon Scale Leg Armor, and then put Landslide on your weapon. Finally, don't forget to get an Even Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gem slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gemmed. For your Meta Socket, you'll be slotting in a Reverberating Shadow Spirit Diamond. This will provide you with some more strength, and increase the amount of damage that your critical strikes deal. In your red slots, you have a couple of options. You can use Bold Inferno Ruby for more damage, or you can use Resplendent Ember Topaz for a little more tankiness. You can also slot in an Inscribed Ember Topaz for some additional crit. You want to fill one blue slot with a Steady Dream Emerald, but you can put Mystic Amber Jewels for more resilience and durability in all other blue slots. And then in yellow sockets, put in Mystic Amber Jewels as well. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few choices. You're going to want to go blacksmithing and tailoring, but you do have some flexibility here. Blacksmithing is an obvious pick as it gives you two additional sockets on your bracers and gloves. Now, these are prismatic sockets, which means that you can fill these with any stat that you need or strength gems for more damage. Your second default pick is tailoring for Sword Guard. This enchant provides a massive attack power buff, which we can pair with our cooldowns, such as Bladestorm. As an alternative pick to tailoring, you can go jewel crafting, and the benefit is that you're going to gain a little more main stat for your gems. This can be easier to manage as you're not playing around a proc, but it is overall less pressure. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. First up, you'll want focus macros for Intimidating Shout, Heroic Throw, Pummel, and Throwdown. We then have several macros we can use to pair with our damaging cooldowns, Inner Rage, Bladestorm, and Deadly Calm. This is going to activate all of your damaging abilities at once in order to deal the highest possible damage. It's also recommended to have intervene macros for Party 1 and 2, and this is going to allow you to instantly intervene to your party members without having to target them. You'll also need a Shield Wall and Spell Reflect macro. This ensures that you can quickly enter defensive stance and equip a shield. Finally, you should have a macro that takes you back into Berserker or Battle Stance with the appropriate weapon after you use Defensive Stance. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go though, be sure to check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're gonna climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.